India was long doubted for its global standing, a country that saw 200 years of British rule, a messy partition, and then surrounded by regional foes. But even amid all of this turmoil, it had a vision to emerge as a global leader in the 21st century. Now, today, India has not only made its space among the leading world powers, it has achieved what very few have been able to, global cooperation. New Delhi does not believe in pulling other nations down. It knows how to coexist with differences. And the groupings that India is a part of are a proof of this. Let's start with the Quad. It is a strategic security alliance. While it is relatively new, the alliance has proved to be a major player in peace and stability. China's growing hostility in the region has been one of the top agendas. From India Pacific, let's move to South Asia. Now that brings us to SARC. This grouping is an economic and political organization of eight South Asian countries. The region is standing at a crossroads. There is a severe economic crisis in Sri Lanka. The Taliban has returned to Afghanistan and Pakistan is facing a dual crisis, economic and political. Now, India has been extending its neighborhood first policy here. It has helped Sri Lanka and financially as well as uh, Afghanistan socially. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was one of the first to congratulate the Pakistani Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif when he was sworn in. Now coming to the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, this is a transcontinental political, economic, security and military alliance. India, along with China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Pakistan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan are member states. Now, in the recent years, New Delhi has pushed for action against terrorism in the SEO meetings, which has been seen as a major concern in the region. Now look at BRICS. It is an alliance of five emerging economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. It was formed in 2009 to strengthen economic cooperation. After all, these countries make up nearly one quarter of global GDP. But as the years went by, the objective of this grouping has broadened. While there are a myriad of security concerns with China, this grouping has helped New Delhi and Beijing become a commercial partner. And lastly, the talk of the town, the G7. India is not a member of this group, but New Delhi has been invited eight times to their summits. Group of Seven is a block of some of the richest countries in the world, and this year's invitation comes despite India's differing view on the Ukraine-Russia war. India is a part of multiple groupings with very different countries. Each group has its own purpose and agenda. Some political, others economic. But what remains constant is India's aim to find common interests and a vision to coexist. But at the same time, New Delhi does not shy away from sticking to its stand. It doesn't believe in bowing down at the helm of uh, its core principles. Now, Sidan, uh, coming back to you for more on this. Now, with the... Uh, India's participation in this meet, take us through the importance of India being at the G7, considering it is not a member state. Well, India is a member of groupings like SCO, uh, groupings uh, like uh, the BRICS, uh, the G20. It's not a member of G7, but that doesn't mean that India doesn't have an association when it comes to the grouping. Uh, India indeed has a long uh, uh, association starting from 2003, uh, when the then Indian Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee was invited by France to participate uh, in that summit. Then Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh was at the G7 uh, regularly from uh, 2005 to 2009. And now the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi consecutively for the third time uh, being invited at the G7. Now, is there this? There is a contradiction when it comes to India's presence uh, in BRICS SCO and being invited at the G7. Uh, well, it doesn't look like so, given the fact it shows the Indian uh, in New Delhi's growing stature, how New Delhi has been essentially being uh, sorted out by countries, whether it's uh, the West, whether it's uh, the East, and uh, the presence of New Delhi, in fact, adds to 
to the weightage of any grouping and being invited at the G7 means it's for G7 it's a good news given the fact that we know that uh, when it comes to G7 there is criticism that it's being seen as a limited uh, grouping in terms of uh, uh, its its membership it's uh, primarily being seen as uh, a grouping dominated by uh, the western country so india in a sense uh, adds to the weightage when uh, the G7 meets tomorrow of course uh, that's monday we will see the uh, retreat summit where the indian prime minister narendra modi will be speaking at two sessions first on climate change and gender, gender inequality and not just india but it's also indonesia uh, senegal uh, south africa and argentina who have been invited uh, that shows that how g7 is reaching out to the global south absolutely zavan thank you very much for keeping us up, us updated with all the latest coming out of the g7 summit we are now available in your country download the app now get all the news on the move